Welcome back, everybody, to Be Varsity Live. I'm your host, Trevor Horn. It is now time, well, first off, to tell you that we are brought to you by Grapevine MSP and Motor City Buick GMC. Preview and prediction segment for the next half hour. Larry Parker's still chilling with us. He's got a lot of great insight. And then we've got Josh Bennett, the famous Josh Bennett, the <laughs> fair-flavored Josh Bennett. <laughs> Josh, before we get started, how much fun was that for you for Sunday on Sunday to get paid to go to work and eat food at the fair? Uh, I mean, it, it was unique i mean how many people could just say they can do that so that's that's cool though yeah it's like you know you get played to play a game yeah paid to play a game like larry did exactly. you got paid to eat fair food yeah i mean you're getting paid to have fun either way like yep. it's it's the dream what was the favorite thing you got on sunday most favorite uh what was the best most delicious i mean do i have to choose one i mean yes one <laughs> just like uh, you have to choose a winner here that's true okay so um I had these giant jalapeno poppers that had like cream cheese in. It was like a whole pepper, had cream cheese in them, wrapped in bacon and fried in like fried chicken batter. That was that was pretty good. Oh Spicy, boy, spicy but it was good. Yeah. Would you eat it? Oh, of course. Yeah. It's cheap too. It's only like five I'm bucks. A foodie. Three I'm a little bit so. of a foodie too. I know, and I, I I try to still be a foodie, but man, it's so hard because I'm trying to continue this process. But I tell people, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. We're gonna we're gonna really kind of uh, pick Larry's brain while we're doing this. All right, Josh. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And by the way, if you guys are watching us live on Facebook, if you have any questions for us or any input, go ahead. I've got the uh, yeah, I got the laptop open. I can read the stuff you're saying. You can read. <laughs> I can't write. We all know that. Well, yeah. Okay. Let's stop talking badly about me. I don't like him. Let's start off with Love eight-man Trevor. football. Larry, you know a lot about eight-man football, right? Oh, not not really. Back in the day, I think Bakersfield Christian was the only school that in town that had an eight-man team. Yeah, we don't have any in town, in but county. we still have some in the county. Yeah. So Desert is on the road this week down in Paso Verdes Peninsula, wherever that is. I'm not sure, but it sounds beautiful. Uh, so the Scorpions, two and three, playing a Chadwick team that's 4-0 and oh, quickly. Chadwick's going to run away with this one, right, Josh? Yeah, they're they're good. Desert's all right, but Chadwick's a little better, so yeah. So I, I gonna, like Desert this year, though. I don't know why. Like, I just like their team, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, you've seen Desert at times. You know, you get all those Air Force kids up there, and they played some great football. But you know, when their head coach left a couple of years ago and and went to Antelope Valley High School. Do you know Antelope Valley has an Antelope Valley High School, Antelope Valley Junior College, and an Antelope Valley University, which is an NAIA program? Antelope Valley, is that right? Jermaine Lewis, is he the coach? Yeah. But why? Have some creativity. Stop confusing <laughs> us. Stop it. So anyway, so, uh, yeah, Chadwick, what do you, Larry? I'll go with Chadwick. Okay, cool. Uh, we got two more eight-man games. Let's run through these really quickly. Maricopa at home against Villanova Prep at a Ojai. Uh, I'd rather be in Ojai some days because of the weather is so beautiful out there near Santa Barbara. I've got Villanova Prep one in this one, 29-12. Josh? Yeah, uh, 42-17 Villanova Prep. Larry? I got V Prep. All right. And one last one. We got another prep school. This one, Mission Prep out of San Luis Obispo at Fraser Mountain. Matt Alvarez will be at this game hanging out because he's a CHP officer, and he's got the Lebec Fraser Park area. So he's going to go check this one out. He's going to be go. our uh, correspondent out there. <laughs> so, uh, But, you know, Fraser Mountain have a tough run while Mission Prep's played very well this year. They've even played a couple 11-man games as an 8-man team. Oh, really? So, I mean, if that's going to tell you anything, I got Mission Prep 47-13. Yeah, I like the Falcons, but uh, Mission Prep will take care of business here. Larry? Mission Prep. All right. John, you got to sit over there. I told you. Yeah, Larry's in here. Yeah, <laughs> Get well, in here, man. Get yeah, in here. Too bad. All right, let's move into 11-man football. We've got Antelope Valley and Burroughs. So Burroughs, a team. Uh, I forgot to pick this game, actually. Yeah, that's not on I didn't list, put this so. one on there, but, you know, obviously you can see by the records this year. Yeah. Uh, both got Antelope Valley, probably went in this one. I mean, it's tough. Larry, I don't know if you've ever Apple seen Valley. anything like this. What did I say? Antelope. Because yeah. we were just talking about yeah. Antelope. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Larry, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but, like, um, Burroughs went to the semifinals in the Southern Section playoffs last year mm -hmm. with a heavy, heavy senior class mm -hmm. that had won from the youth level on. Right. Um, and then 31 seniors graduate, and now they're 0-5, and they've only scored like five touchdowns mm. in the first five games. Uh, it, it, that's part of the problem, too, is those one-town, one-school yeah. programs. Yep. It's incredible. I mean, could you have ima ever imagined something like that happening? No, but it happens. Whenever you lo lose that type of leadership, um, you got to rebuild. And it, it's sometimes tough on a team, sometimes tough on a coach. So 
hopefully they can uh, turn that program around. Yeah, it might be a few years, but you know that's it's been a tough run. Burroughs will figure it out some yep. way somehow down the road. Moving on in the High Desert League, I believe. Move to the next one, please, Diana. There you go. More on, on Rosamond. So Rosamond, God, they're so up and down this year. It's like yeah. they'll go, they'll beat you know uh, Silver Valley or a, a Little Rock team, sixty nine nothing, mm -hmm. and then they'll beat Vasquez at Acton. You know, it's just. Uh, it, it, Handedly, and then they'll come back and get blown out, and I just don't get it. Yeah, it's certainly not the team it was last year. Yeah, but I don't, I don't see a loss coming this week for Rosemont. I've got Roadrunners running away, forty-seven, fourteen. Over yeah, there. I would think, despite their non-league schedule, they're still the class of the High Desert League. So I think they should be Boron. Yeah, I it'll be closer than normal, but yeah, they'll win. Yeah, I don't disagree, Larry. I'm gonna go with Boron. Oh, with the Bobcats, <laughs> the upset. All Sometimes right. you gotta throw that in every now, every now. All right, let's let's see if that one happens, John. <laughs> Rosamond. Okay. Shaking his head like he didn't want to pick it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Next one up. Uh, more High Desert League action. This is, these are league openers. Uh, California City is at Kern Valley. Both teams not playing all that great uh, so far. I mean, California, Cal City's Cal been able to throw. Yeah. They're playing a lot better. Better. Uh, they can throw the ball. They got a wide receiver out there, Chandler, Chandler Howell, who John you saw him help the Ravens win a Central Section basketball title oh, yeah. last year. So you know you've you know you've got some athletes out there. Kern Valley having a tough run. I've got Cal City twenty seven to nineteen. Yeah, I'll take Cal City. I mean, like you, Kern Valley does have, does have a win, but they're at the bottom of those. Uh, Section rankings. Yeah, it's so. it's been a tough They're run so far for, reason, for the Bronx. So. Larry, um, I got Cal City. Okay. Yeah, I picked Kern Valley once this year and regretted it. So <laughs> Cal City. All right, John. Uh, moving into the East Yosemite League, guys, check this out. The East Yosemite League has three teams ranked in our top ten. Mm -hmm. And they're all undefeated in Tulare Union, Tulare I mean, Western, and Portland. Yeah, I was going to say two of them are expected. but Two of them are expected, and then Porterville comes yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, first off, they opened the season uh, with a win over Golden West, who played for a state championship last year. Mm -hmm. And so they've been playing pretty darn well. So you've got Tulare Western this week at Delano. Delano, a team that we've seen get blown out by Shaw, uh, by South. South and yeah. then tough loss to Wasco. Oh, tough loss to Wasco. Uh, they, but you know they they are three and two going in. But I just don't look at this game and go, oh, this is a game they can compete in because no, they're, they're just Tulare a, Western yeah. is just such a good team. Great offensive line. Taron Johnson has already over a thousand yards this season rushing. Yeah. Um, I don't. They, 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 I just don't know how this game isn't a running clock in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, Delano's not a bad team in any sense of the way. They're they're a good team, but they're just uh, cursed with being in a, such a competitive league. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I have the score a little closer, probably with running clock stuff. But, yeah, I mean, Tulare Washington should should win here. Yep. I got Tulare Western. Is that where the Burrell brothers, are, aren't they playing there? Mm -hmm. I got Tulare, Tulare Western. They'll, yeah. they'll take care of it. It should be definitely a running clock. Yep. Yeah, the younger brother there yep. is now yep. in his senior year. The older brother, I think it's at Fresno State, right? Is that right? I think they're both. Or they're both still there. I think they're both still there. Well, it's a good football program. They're getting program. heavily recruited, yeah, too. Yeah, they're definitely getting It's a good recruited. football program. They won yep. the D3 title last year. Yep. They're up in D2 now. And so mm -hmm. uh, that – you know, that regular season finale against Tulare Union is not just for bragging rights in the mm -hmm. city or for the league. It's also now probably for the number one seed in D2. Okay. Yep. Yep. Moving on, SSL action. Like I said, the SSL is now in their third week of play. Um, I will have a full preview of all four leagues, all three Yosemite leagues, and the SSL online at BigSell.com. You're spoiling um, the readers, Trevor. <laughs> am I? Am I yeah. spoiling them with, yeah. what, too much? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'm just saying they should be thankful. What a league previews? Yeah. It's a good thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> hey, before we get into it, um, got a question for you, Larry, mm -hmm. uh, from LaKendrick Ellis, mm -hmm. asking, why are so many ACL injuries compared to back in the day? Is it, are, is it like what we were talking about I think earlier? it's like what we were talking about. Um, back Too in the day, much. we used to go play basketball. We played baseball. We played soccer. We ran track. We got used to different movement patterns, mm -hmm. and our joints and ligaments were, were a little bit stronger. Because of that, and now we're, we're just doing football. We're just doing football movements. We're just doing squats. Mm -hmm. We're just doing deadlifts now, and I think that's creating the part of the problem with these ACL injuries. We're not doing we're not doing different movement patterns. I can agree um, with that. We're not being as 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 it's oddly enough the kids are a little bit more athletic, but they're not doing athletic things. Yep. Different athletic things. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree with you more. So, Kendrick, thanks for the. Uh, 
for the uh, the question. If you, anything more, I got it popped up. We can ask Larry while we're going through this. Uh, going back to the SSL, sorry, Chavez is at Arvin. Uh, Chavez, you know, a team that went 0-9 last year. They've got two wins in, uh, so far this year, 1-1 one one in league play. Arvin coming in. Uh, they're 0-1 in league play, 3-2, and two, but Carlos – North Norzagaray. Thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, you caught playing, me off guard there. Yeah, playing quite well. You know, soccer player playing well at running back this year for the Bears, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a recipe. Despite joining for, the team late. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's a recipe for success for the Bears to get their first SSL win. I've got Ar Arvin winning this one, twenty-seven to twenty. Josh. Yeah, Arvin's a much improved team. They uh, got one of those two very tough games out of the way. They they got the Kennedy game out of the way, so yeah. that's done. So. I mean, Chavez is obviously on the up, good for them, but uh, Arvin's got something special going on down there, I think, to get the win, 34-16. I'm going with Arvin because in my four years of high school, Arvin High School played us the toughest my senior year, so I always got respect for Arvin, Arvin High School. Because Coach Chamberlain was the man. I, they we barely won 17 14. Well, you barely know what won. they used to do barely you know won. Him, you know what him in the showers used to do what? they used to drive around a pickup truck and all the kids that didn't have a ride they uh, used to go around and pick them up throw them in the back of the truck when it was still okay to do that yeah and that's why they were so, so successful edgar Maris is a great football coach mm -hmm. at arvin but he's limited in the access of what he was able to do with a lot of those kids and i think that he um is a very um underappreciated head coach right. in kern county right because it's it's really tough to you know you got a bunch of kids that, you know it's tough for them to get out and mm -hmm. get into practice and right. not have to go work for their families so right. it's incredible john yeah i've got prediction? arvin too we've seen some games this year where they've you know really come out and played well and gotten some wins that you know what how many wins did they have last year total two yeah, two. yeah. yeah. already eclipsed that so yep. keep it going yep exactly yeah. about some well, coach mars got some uh, success down there too yep. so Moving on the SSL, Shafter is now in the top 25, ranked number 25 in our central section rankings, and they're on the road at McFarland. Shafter, 6-0 and this year. They haven't had a they, they really haven't had a competitive game other than maybe the Highland game. Yeah, uh, the but they still won. The yeah, exactly, game, yeah. but they still won by two touchdowns. Yeah. Um, they've ran roughshed over the SSL. McFarland, a team that came in, you know, they won four games, but they were two, four of the lowest-ranked teams on the central section. Come in, 0-2 in league. And it's kind of proven how tough the SSL is this year. Shafter, Alex Aguilar is ranked in the top five of the nation, according to Max Prep stats, in total wow. offensive yards for quarterback. Wow. He's got 34 touchdowns already, 22 through the air, 11 on the ground, and then he had a pick six <laughs> last week. And I asked Bob Barnett, our central section historian, I said, do you count that when you're talking about touchdowns for a quarterback? He's like, you, you know you do, Trevor. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it, it, there you go. The central section record for touchdowns in a season for a quarterback is 62, last done by Brandon Jones at BCHS in 2013. Mm -hmm. Between Alex Aguilar and what Trent Tompkins is doing up at uh, the central, central, he's got 31 in five games, 28 passing, three rushing, I believe. And they've got a huge showdown tomorrow night. Buchanan, right? Buchanan at Central. And I put Buchanan number one in the central section after, you know, that loss to De La Salle yeah. last mm -hmm. week. Yeah. And really, Buchanan's had a tougher schedule than Central. So I wanted to credit uh, Buchanan for that and put him number one and allowing the two of them to kind of, you know, prove it on the field mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, squash all doubt of who the best team is. Right. Um, but, you know, going back to Aguilar, what a great offensive talent, but it's not just him. I mean, John, you've seen this team play. You saw him last week. You know, they've got great receivers. They've got yep. a decent O-line. And those guys but play both ways, but they're highly conditioned. And they don't tire out in the fourth quarter. And really, they don't have to pit. They haven't had to play you know, competitively in the fourth quarter almost well, all season. Yeah, and they haven't had to and still – Perucci's kept a lot of those guys in. Well, they like, have to. He doesn't yeah. really – he even says, he goes, I don't really have a backup quarterback. Yeah. So we end up – and Alex usually runs RPOs or hands off to Pedro Villa right. late in the game because you don't have another option. You can't take him out because you don't have anything. But you also don't want to get – want him getting hurt so we yeah so they don't run the ball and he hands it off and gets away as much as possible to protect his body and i think that's going to be one of those situations again i've got shafter winning this one 63 14. yeah uh 56 14 shafter uh mcfarland with the unwelcome uh introduction to the ssl so far but uh yeah shafter's going to keep rolling for yep now. i got shafter Pruch, he's my guy yep shafter yep all right, moving on, uh, final SSL game. Kennedy, another team, 6-0 and at Wasco. Crazy thing about this, these two are both averaging almost exactly the same amount of yards and yards per attempt. 
rushing. Both are on the triple yep. triple option veer and both doing almost to perfection. Yeah, well, uh, I think Wasco's actually averaging like maybe a yard or two more than Kennedy. But yeah, because Wasco's probably also they've also played more competitive games this year as well. Course, yeah. Where but, Kennedy's in the same boat but yeah, that the same Shafter's been in, but they're at offense. the same level exactly. Yeah. So you know this is no gimme for Kennedy. Even no, it's, though it's, it's going to come down to the defense here. It really is, and I think that it's going to come down this game and in the playoffs for Kennedy. What's going to be the determining factor for them is the depth. This is a Division Five team that has only one two-way player, which is incredible because you're playing a bunch of one school, one town teams where your best players are probably not leaving the field ever. even on kickoff return, ever. on punts, ever. They're playing every single snap. At, but Mario Milan, who, an old BHS assistant mm -hmm. for Paul Gola when mm -hmm. Gola first got into town, uh, you know, he says, I don't have to. I've got the players, and I have confidence that they can do that. And I think that's going to be the biggest uh, determining factor for Kennedy throughout the season is their depth and fresh legs. And so in this one, and I still think that Kennedy is the better team on the field, even though I think it's going to be a highly competitive yeah. barn burner. I've got Kennedy winning this one, 49-35. You've got a little bit closer. Yeah, I got Kennedy 45-41. Um I'll be honest, I went back and forth on this one. I really wanted to pick Wasco, but I was looking at their uh, defensive numbers, and Kennedy could just is better at stopping the run than Wasco. When, especially when you look at like yeah. Yokani Sandoval, who will mm -hmm. take a sweep, and he's a little small scat back guy, and he's still averaging 20 yards a carry five games wow. into the season. And yeah, they got another that. dude who's a total – he's a Mike Allstott. He's a touchdown vulture. Onaveros, he's got nine carries, seven for touchdowns, all in wow. the last three games. Wow. So. I got there. Wasco. Okay. I watched him on, uh, a little bit on tape last week. I like yeah. Wasco. No, Chad Wasco. Martinez has got things yeah. rolling. He's doing a good job there. Yeah. I think this is going to be a very competitive it game. Will. And if I'm wrong on Kennedy, if you're wrong on Kennedy, then so be it. It's just yeah. going to be a great football yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that. I almost picked Wasco in this Yeah, one. this is going to be a great football yeah. game. I've got Kennedy because I still think we're going to see that undefeated. Yeah, undefeated game on yeah. October 19th. Man, I am stoked for that one. Yep. I'm going to give you some tacos while I'm out there. All right, let's move into the SEYL North at Highland. This is the game of the week in the SEYL. Oh, sorry, we're going to start off with East Miramonte. Sorry, I've got my paper messed up with what's on screen. So East Miramonte. Miramonte, a team that won five games in the last five years, mm -hmm. is on a two-game winning streak for the first time. For only the second time in school history. Yeah. And here they are with a great chance at home to win three in a row and get to 500, yeah, which is incredible say, yeah. when Be you think about it for the first for time. Big yeah. time knows how long. The team was winless last year. Mm -hmm. Christian Johnson comes in as a first-year head coach and totally puts a totally different mentality, brings the Ridgeview offense over. Yeah. and They took their licks early on, but yeah. yeah it's, well, it's they also off. played Shafter and Kennedy well, it, early yeah. on. But, I mean, that's two games off. right there yeah. that you're overmatched mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah. And so, you know, they've beat Kern Valley. They beat Rosemont. Mm -hmm. Now you have an East team that's a little bit down. And are you going to open up league play Miramonte with a win? I say, yeah. I yeah. think Miramonte yeah. is going to win this one, 35-27. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Uh, I have 30 21 Miramonte. Yeah. I mean, we're picking Miramonte right now to win football games right now. It's incredible. We're this picking Miramonte to go on a three game winning streak. Yeah. yeah. And go to 500 probably for the first time since the school was like, built. Yeah. I mean, so. it's incredible. And, it, you know, these are the stories that you love to tell and mm -hmm. you talk about is that, you know, these kids, you know, these seniors hadn't never experienced a win during their junior years and then sophomore year only one and before that none as freshmen. And now, you know, they could go on a three game winning streak. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, th they could go to 500 here and look ahead of the schedule. They should be Foothill. I mean, they could be maybe a first-round playoff game for them. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Larry? Let's go with Miramonte. Let's, I want to see that program turn around and get some kids out for the for, for coming out for the future. I think they got something to build on over there. They got football players yep. down there. Yep. Keep it rolling, Miramonte. Okay. All right, there you go. Moving on. Two more games in the SEYL. Here's the game of the week in the SEYL. North at Highland. This is such an intriguing game. Highland's such a young team. Bunch of athletes took their licks early on. They look good. North is a team that maybe had some turmoil in the locker room. We're not 100% certain. Had some injuries. Chris Romero didn't play uh, against Shafter. He came back. He's a great running back. They put Shannon Ferguson at quarterback, and the dude goes 10 for 10 for 220 yards and four touchdowns two weeks ago. 10 for 10? 10 for 10. Whoa. 
And the dude is a basketball player. Wow. But he can throw the ball, and he's athletic, mm -hmm. and he's got athletes around him with James Jones, Chris Romero, and guys like that. Mm -hmm. And something tells me that Norm Brown always has this team where they're a little dysfunctional at first, but then they he, he gives them – slow starts. It's yeah. slow starts. And Coach Brown told me that. They, yeah. They're notorious for slow starts. Yeah, and he, he's wanted, a, he wanted he's to a, change that. He's and, a tough yeah. love guy. A lot of – rubs some people the wrong way, but he gets results. He gets it done. Being, mm -hmm. He does. Yeah. But it just takes a little while. And I think we're seeing that again for the second year in a row where they yeah. had a slow start last year and they reeled off six straight and went on to the semifinals in D4. I'm not saying they're going to go that far again. I'm not ready to make that proclamation just yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they win tomorrow night. I've got North winning this one, 35-28. Yeah, I got North 31-30. I mean, like we said, North notorious for the slow starts. And here they, I mean, here they are again, deja vu. They're starting to pick it up going into league play. I mean, they, they, uh, they're the ones that dethroned Highland last year. So yep. if anyone can beat them, it's North. Yeah, exactly. Highland was 8-0 going in that regular season finale last year. And North went in and beat them. And then North. You know, Highland lost the next week and ended the season on a two-game losing streak. Yeah. And North went on to the semifinal. It's pretty incredible. Larry. I got Highland. Go Scots. Okay. North. I mean, North is supposed to have their starting quarterback back this week, too. And, you know, I can't get the game against West out of my head, just how good North looked in that one. So I'm going to take North. Okay. Uh, and finally, the last game in the SEYL probably won't be that competitive, folks. Foothills having a tough run this year, while South had a but you know a tough loss. They were up twenty nothing against West last week, mm -hmm. end up losing this one twenty seven twenty six. And you got to figure those guys. They're a talent. That's a talented football team over at South. They're ready to get this one over early, and I think that's going to happen. I think the Rebels are going to roll. I've got South winning this one, fifty-five to six. And this is the first of about three games where I'm just going to look at Josh and say, "Get out of my head, bro," because you've got this one. Yeah, uh, fifty-six six South. Yeah. Um, so again, you like extra points more than I do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I like Foothill. I want them to succeed, but it's, it's I don't know they. It, it's tough for them. I mean, you've, you've said the factors before. Some of the other teams, they share that. But I don't know. Something's got to give eventually, but it won't happen here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know you, if it will this year. Well, honestly. you thought a new coaching staff with Brandon Decker coming in, much like Christian Johnson. I don't know. And I'm not saying that Brandon Decker's not a good coach because he no, is. it's just a very tough situation. It is a very tough situation. So, uh, Larry? I got the Rebels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, South can put up points. So yeah, South. And, and Foothill cannot score this year. Yeah. So it, it, it's tough to say, but it's the truth. Moving on to the South Yosemite League now. Independence on the road at Tehachapi. Independence, a team, you know, Tyler Shellhawel, I think, is – Quietly, I mean, not quietly. I mean, he's a pretty boisterous young man, but I think that, you know, he's showing his ability to, you know, coach up this football team. And Sergio Borelli is showing how tough he is. You know, he went down with a, a nasty knee injury against Stockdale, came back. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the in the, in the the county this year. And they're going up on the road against a Tehachapi team that's had a tough run. They've had a tough run. They opened the season with a loss to Wasco, yeah. and it hasn't gotten much easier for them. Um, I just I, – I don't know if they have the numbers up there this year. The, it looked a little bit lighter than in years past. But I think Independence is a team that's going to go up on the hill and, you know, they're going to throw the ball well, they're going to run the ball well, and I think they're going to come away with a pretty easy victory. I got it 28-13. Yeah, I got 44-20 Falcons. Um, I said last week that that Frontier game was a – probably the first coach-defining challenging game for Show Hobble, and he – Proof that he's he's capable of being a good coach and making adjustments. And right. And we're starting to see yeah. that Stockdale loss come into factor a little bit more. They, they had a couple guys that had some, yeah. some issues, and they had to sit out a little bit. Borelli was not 100% in that game. He got mm. dinged up. So you're looking at that loss a little bit more. And I think Stockdale really had a chip on their shoulder with Evan Burkhardt at quarterback. So I yeah. think a lot of things change in that. But I think Independence really is going to not only <laughs> – you know, battle for a win tomorrow night, but also battle for the SYL title. We'll Absolutely. get into that. Yeah. And I get more into that in my preview, uh, my look ahead in the uh, on our website and yeah. in tomorrow's California. Uh, moving on in the SYL. Oh, you didn't ask them. Oh, sorry, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I got independence. Uh, okay. Sergio's playing well, and Big Den Weed's over there playing well, too. Dude, the, the, <laughs> he's an athlete. Yeah, man. he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Him and, and, and Malik Duluth, both yep. really good yep. athletes for them, both yep. ways. John? Like Josh did, brought up the Frontier game. Good win for Independence. This should be another win for Independence. Yep, very much so. Moving on, uh, one team west coming off a big win. The other team, BCHS. How do you re rebound from an 83 nothing loss on national TV? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's I don't. exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the question. How will they? Yeah, yes. yeah. That, that's, the, that's the big question going into this. How yeah. does Coach Carr rebound? 
Yeah. You just tell those guys that's an aberration. That's that's an anomaly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one. That's a top twenty-five ranked team in the nation that you just played. Yeah. But and then again, like I said last week, it's a game that should have never happened. Yeah, I mean, I could see your point. I think, I think we we differ a little bit on that because I think that sometimes you you want to give your kids a chance to, to see the best, get on the field, reality. Yeah, but a little dose watching reality. the game, they didn't have a chance to move the ball past the fifty. That's, no, that's not. But Garces didn't have a chance to move the ball. The whole past game the they didn't move past. But Garces they, did. They did. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking about last year. Okay. When oh, they played yeah. Bosco for the first time last year at Mission Viejo, uh, they, they didn't get the ball past the 50, and then the game mm. slowed down for them, and they ended up going four and one in league play, and they mm. went and you know beat Foothill well, Frontier for the second time <clears> in three weeks in the quarterfinals. They made it to the semifinals before losing to Tulare Union D2 last year. So you know it, it proved that it didn't hurt Garces last year, and we'll see if it didn't hurt BCHS starting this week. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's two different things because the Bosco game, they just went down there and played them. This was on TV for everyone to see. Well, I don't that, that, How do you a, say no to ESPN, though? Do you, you say no? No, well, of course not. But it, it, you're on national TV, and you that's how you perform. Like, that that hurts inside. That's yeah. That's going to leave a huge chip in your shoulder, and that's going to leave a lot of doubt in your mind. I think. Well, we're going to find out tomorrow night yeah. if they can respond. I think they can. I think they're a good team. West, uh, according to their head coach, Derek Dunham, still is without LJ Lalau, uh, still battering, mm. battling with a leg injury. Uh, but they got good – you know, the, they got 200 yards out of the running back. Uh, Damani Jackson last year went for two – last week went for 201 and three touchdowns. Good-sized kid. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I, did, I think this is one of those pick em games. I think BCHS comes out victorious. I've got it 35-27. I'm going to go West 2027. Uh, the stuff I said earlier. And then looking at West, you know, coming back 20 nothing deficit from South wasn't a, wasn't a fluke, I think. They figured out how to run their offense without LJ Lowell, and yeah. I think they could go in there and shock him. Well, and I, I, I guess I'm going to continue having Paul Stein still yell out my name after photos. So, Paul, sorry. I still think BCHS is going to win this game. <laughs> Larry? Uh, I got BCHS. I think Coach Carr and Coach Wallace over there are going to get those guys turned around, and they're going to they're gonna buck up for this game. I'm going to say West just to make it even, but I think this one can go either way. Okay. And the last game in the SYL is uh, – Another game, I don't know why I put Southwest Assembly League. I apologize about that, guys. But obviously, this is an SYL. Uh, another game that I think is going to get out of hand early, Golden Valley. I think I think they got like 20 kids on the team right now. Yeah, Having a I tough mean, run at Josh Bockers first. Yeah, I mean, game, yeah. yeah, that's tough. And I think Ridgeview is, uh, it, from what I've heard from Dennis Manny, is they're going to tinker with the offense a little bit more. They're going to run a little bit of RPO, Wildcat, to see if Elijah Alexander-Williams can take snaps. Uh, st- still see if Taj can take snaps and kind of you know revamp, revamp that offense because the thing is you look at it that defense had four interceptions against Clovis North last week and they could not sustain a drive offensively so something needs to change yeah, whether or not it's Justin Hen- Henzo's fault or not I don't think it is something's got to change you, you you can't continue doing the same thing week in and week out and I think Dennis Manning is showing that he's got to find another way to you know move the ball this is too much of a talented football team they've got way too many playmakers on there. I don't yeah, think I don't think Anthony yeah. Ramirez is being used enough in the offense, and maybe this is a way to get him back into the fold again. At all. Of, at all. At all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got three catches all year. Now, Dalen DeGraffin Reed's played great, right. um, and then but you know Alexander Williams, I think he's one of the best running backs on the central section, but he's only averaging like forty six yards, so something's got to give here. Yeah, I mean, you look at Ridgeview earlier too against Liberty and BHS, they could do nothing, so they got to figure something out. Nothing against Golden Valley, but this is the game to try some stuff. Yeah, out. exactly. Yeah. So I've got a thirty five six just because I think some of those kinks are going to halt the offense. And they haven't really showed me much the last two weeks against Clovis North and Buc- and Bakersfield, so I don't have it as uh, wide open as you do. But I still think it's going to be you know an easy victory for Richard. Yeah, I took fifty five six. Might get some special team scores in there. But uh, shout out to Coach Bacher, Golden Valley last week on their bye week. Took the team out bowling for a little uh, team bonding. I mean, best Twitter account really. I think yeah. for a football program. Yeah, so I'll give him that. So you get with the young coach. So right? he's yeah. trying. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think Larry. obviously I got Ridgeview. I think for Ridgeview to, to pick up and start winning and be and be really consistent, I think Justin Henzo's the guy to be able to get it to those weapons he has mm-hmm. on the outside edge. Um, that's just my opinion. No, and I I don't just disagree with you, but something's got to give here. And I, I think Justin hasn't been given the time to get into his rhythm out there on offense. I think he's the guy that's gonna that can take uh, Ridgeview the furthest. Because really, I mean, if you put the ball in his hands, the quarterback, and then you've got all those other guys at your disposal, you can't defend all of those guys. You can't. No, you can't. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think the final score is going to be too important in this one, but Ridgeview is going to win it either way. And, and it's almost like a scrimmage for them, too, if you think yeah, about it. It allows them exactly, this week. But, yeah. I'll say it, it. It probably is. I mean, there's no offense to Golden Valley. They're just overmatched here. Yep. And I think yeah. Ridgeview, this is, if, if you're going to do something in the middle of the regular season and in Lee and try to retool your offense, fortunate that you have this game, especially coming mm -hmm. off of a bye. You've had two weeks to get mm -hmm. this stuff figured out. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, nothing against the SYL, but it's going to be easier for Ridgeview until the playoffs yep. as well. So. Yep. And good on Bacher getting those kids together going bowling. Yep. You've already got enough challenges. You don't want to lose them mentally. So maybe Yeah, keep can, them invested in yeah, the keep team them together. aspect. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, three games to go at Southwest Yosemite League. We start off with, I think, the most intriguing game out of them all. It's Frontier at Garces. You know, Frontier is two and three right now. A uh, couple good wins, um, hasn't really played up in competition where Garces, you know, had, I think, the second toughest non-league schedule in the central section, which obviously, you know, Bosco kind of weighs that yeah. mm -hmm. down a little bit because they are the number one ranked team in the nation. But, you know, they still played St. Joseph. St. Joseph Memorial. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that St. Joe game could have yeah. gone either way. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the, the Knights came back and won on the last second play. Yeah. That Memorial game kind of kind of got, got away from them. But, you know, Jalen McMillan is a great wide receiver, and their quarterback, Alex Trio, is a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, they got some injuries. I don't know if Isaiah Bell is 100%, but he should play tomorrow night. Um, they lost J.P. Lefevre to an ACL injury two weeks ago, so he's out, so that's going to hurt the O-line. But I think that, you know, A.J. Gass has a, has a way, too, of – you know, figuring out you play up. It doesn't matter what you do in non-league as mm -hmm. long as you play hard and you're competitive. And then you get into league, and they showed that last year with that win over BHS at mm -hmm. home. Um, and I think that's going to factor in here. And I think Garces um, is going to get a few things going. And I think Joseph Campbell's going to get the passing game going a little bit more. Yep. Um, I think Nick Tobias has uh, been playing better at running back in the last three weeks. Frontier still looks like a good football team, but I think Garces just has one extra play in here, mm -hmm. and I've got the Rams winning 24-21. Yeah, uh, this was a complete toss-up for me. Um, I'm going to go Frontier 23-21. I think you got to take those injuries into consideration for Garces. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, Frontier just edges them out, I guess. I don't know. It's, Robert it's, it's Vanka, honestly what, a toss-up. I don't know. Robert Vanka on Facebook, what did you miss? I talked well about your son. That's what you missed. You might want to rewind and watch it, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I think I said Anthony Ramirez is an incredible Anthony football Anthony Ramirez is, needs to be an active part of Ridgeview's offense for them to have success. He is an – I mean, who can defend him? Nobody. Exactly. He's big enough to beat the secondary, and he's quick enough to get past a D-line and yep. the linebackers. Yep. Yep. That's just me. Uh, moving on, Mark Thompson, Bills beat Vikings. Can the Golden Hawks upset Liberty? It's funny you ask that <laughs> because we're going to talk about that in just a second. Before we do that, we've got Bakersfield uh -oh. at Stockdale. Game I'll be at. Game, obviously. I'll be there for That'll sure. be your last that, high school football game. I, I would have already left town already if it wasn't for this game. Yeah, because <laughs> game. You, you have a it double a in, good game, invested man. interest as a former I driller. Do. And then Evan Burkhart, the Evan Burkhart's my guy. Everybody knows that. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a big, big, big game. Um I, I give the edge to Bakersfield if they can figure out um, what's going on on offense, stop with stop the turnovers, and get a little bit uh, a little bit a little bit more options in the in the offense. I think Bakersfield wins easy. If they don't, it's going to be a tough game. Evan Burkhart's going to be ready to play. Um, it's it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be 28-13. I don't think that there is a team in the central section that can beat BHS if the Drillers are able to play 48 minutes without turning the ball over. Right. Right. Is there an important phone call, Larry? Do you need to pick it up? It's there. <laughs> <laughs> you said 3 o'clock, Larry. I'm right. keeping you for two more minutes. All right. All right. So, yeah, so th 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 there's a big situation with this BHS game. If this, if the drillers can not turn the ball over 48 minutes, they're unbeatable. They really are. I think they're yeah. that talented of a yep. football team. I agree. And their defense plays that well. The problem is they do, mm -hmm. and they do it every week, and it doesn't every matter. Game. That they so did it against Tehachapi a team that they blew out by 50 points. Mm -hmm. They still turn the ball over. You've got to figure that out. For this driller team to be as good as they are, mm -hmm. not just on paper, as good as they are, they have to stop turning the ball over yep. because this football team is too good. And we just can't be as predictable as we are. I'm, I'm just sorry. I love, I love Coach Gold. I love his staff. But we're just too predictable. And other teams know it. I yeah. mean, I talk to players that have played against Bakersfield from other, play, from other cities. You know, they just they run the same play. And that's exactly what everyone's comment is. They run the same play. And if we don't change that up, we're going to have some problems. And Carl Jones needs to learn to hand the ball off. 
A little bit, yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I love Carl. He runs the ball really hard, and he's very hard to defend. But I have not seen him hand it off out of the Wildcat RPL. You know, he's a winner. And yeah. He wants to win, and he, yeah. and, he, and he feels like sometimes if he has to put it on his shoulders, he's going to do it. That's a good thing in, in, cer in yeah. certain sense, senses, but he does need to pitch the ball and a if, little more. And if you guys missed it, uh, Carl Jones was reinstated to be able to play this week. Yeah. After his ejection in the fourth quarter, Mark Roberts, head of KCOA, uh, went back and looked at it, talked to Scott Spielman, who was a white hat that night, and they said that it did not warrant an ejection, that it was more of a push, not a punch, according to Mark Roberts. Right. So they rescinded it, and he will be able to play Friday night, which is cool because he gets to play against his old offensive co old head coach at Golden Valley and Eric Smith, who's offensive coordinator at Stockdale. They, I forgot about that angle. They have a really good relationship. You saw him mm -hmm. at Carl's verbal mm -hmm. commitment ceremony. Yep. He showed up. And, you know, and I think that they still have a, a great love for each other. Mm, and so it'll be absolutely. really interesting tomorrow night to yeah. see that happen. However, going back to the game, we've only got a few more minutes. we got to get everybody out of here. I think that BHS finish, fish, figures those things out. I think last week's loss to Sierra Canyon um, really kind of hurt the team's uh, psyche a little bit. And they don't want that to happen. And yeah. I've always said it, Paul Gola, when the, his teams are most successful is when he has senior leaders that can take on the brunt of getting the rest of the guys tuned in. And Very I true. think he's got those seniors this year. Mm -hmm. Adrian Moreno turned around. He does this every week. Jacob Zyman. I, even Cam Williams and Carl Jones, they take these things personally. And I think you're going to see a lot of those changes happening. And I think it's going to happen. And I think Stockdale is going to be very competitive because I think Stockdale is a lot better team than they were in the first two weeks of the season. They've really turned it around. I just feel like BHS is the better football team overall. And I think they're going to get those turn uh, those turnover bugaboos out of the way. And I think I have BHS winning this one 35-20. Yeah, I'll take BHS 38-24. I, it was. I had it closer until I saw that Carl Jones was going to play. Um, he's obviously an X factor for BHS, and will I think get them to win there. Um, like you said about turnovers, uh, it's tough. I mean, is it something that's going to be cleaned up over no, overnight? No. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they get at least one or two turnovers here. I mean, I don't think it'll be as, as much as right. Sierra Pacific, but, I mean, it's not going to be completely Sierra Canyon clean. full. Sierra Canyon full. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not going to be completely cleaned up. I mean, it's not like you got Tim McGraw coming in duct taping a football to your hands like in Friday Night Lights. I mean, oh, great scene. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's something that takes some time. But uh, Stockdale's a good team, but I don't think they're good enough to capitalize. I mean, they will capitalize on Beach's mistakes, but I don't think they'll make as many. So, yeah. We already know where Larry went with this one, John. I mean, if Carl Jones wasn't playing, I'd consider taking Stockdale in this one. But this is not a game that BHS yeah. should lose. you got to take care of the ball. I don't care if you got to have the kids walk around campus holding the football all day. That's what my football coaches did. Yep. So Adrian Moreno's parents pop off on uh, Facebook. I love this. Burkhart needs to get past middle linebacker Adrian Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> Proud hey, that's going right to hey, yeah. be, be a good matchup. I can't wait to see it. And then your, bo your boy Seth Moses goes, woo, woo, Larry Parker. <laughs> so there you go. You're getting the right one. And then – uh, we've got the Liberty Centennial game. A couple of people have already talked about this one on Facebook. This is the last one we got. We got it. Just a couple more minutes here. Liberty, both of these teams are coming off of a bye. Uh, Liberty's coming off a big win over Clovis, uh, which kind of proves that the track really is a two team race between Buchanan and, and Central. Well, like I said earlier, there's Central, Buchanan, Liberty, BHS, and then the rest. And then the right. rest, yeah. especially in Division One, yeah. Right. Um, well, it, I think that you could throw a couple of those mountain league teams in there, Royal Grande. But really, yeah, I think every like there are four teams in Division like, One. I would that be surprised have if legitimately that wasn't have a chance. Semi. Yeah. yeah, legitimately have. The, 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 both of the games could be BHS Liberty could be one. Yeah, exactly. It could be Central BHS or mm -hmm. Buchanan, you know, Liberty or wh whichever way you want to toss it up. Yep. But Liberty, I think, is a team that is just so fundamentally sound and you're starting to get those guys like Hector Gonzalez and Ramon Henderson into the fold and they're really kind of learning the offense and you know Brian Nixon always talks about three phases of the season and you're mm -hmm. going into phase two now phase one is great but it's like preseason in the NFL yep. where you're just trying Pretty to much. figure some things mm -hmm. out the games I mean they only they only matter when it comes to after you win a section title they don't matter between now and Thanksgiving mm -hmm. yeah. they don't now is what matters mm -hmm. for the. It's the next eight weeks that matters. Right. Nine weeks until Thanksgiving. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. And I think that coaches like Brian Nixon understand that you yeah. play up, you figure th some things out, and then you come into league play and you go at it. Yeah. And then on the opposite side of the field, Chad Brown has got a team that's really playing up. Centennial looked really good, 
looks really good. They had a tough loss to finish off non-league against St. Joe's out on the coast in mm-hmm. Santa Maria. But, you know, Kyle Conley's played well. And this is a very young team. It is. Yeah. You look at sophomore Ty Glass – uh, at running back, you look at sophomore Jake Navarro at linebacker. Uh, you've got two juniors and DJ Adams. And mm-hmm. we're, from what I've heard, you're going to see some different wrinkles out of Centennial in league play now, trying to get the ball into DJ Adams' hands more often, which they should. The guy's averaging 37 and a half yards per catch this year. Whoa. You got to get the ball into his Whoa. hands. He's a big guy and he's shifty, so Whoa. you're going to see th- some things happen. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. But I still think that. Given two weeks and Brian Nixon trying to get guys coached up, it, this is going to land in Liberty's favor. Um, I think it's going to be – it might be closer than what I predict, what you predict, and Josh and I pick, predicted the same exact score. What was that score? 42-21, Liberty. Yep. But here's, here's the thing I see it, though. Um, you look at the Centennial-St. Uh, Joe's game that, that you were at, and St. Joe's had success rushing the quarterback and causing chaos in the backfield. And what's Liberty's strength? Their line. front line. They're, exactly. So if, if St. Joe's can get in there and cause chaos, what's Liberty going to do? Exactly. They're going to do the same thing. I yeah. think they've got the best front five offensive line in the section, mm-hmm. and I think their front seven is one of the best as well in the central section with that 3-4 defense yeah. that really kind of mixes it up. But I think Liberty, you know, you, you I – we talked about it last year. We thought BHS and Liberty were going to be on a cl- mm-hmm. collision course, and obviously they weren't mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. Uh, but I think those two teams are the top two teams in, in league. Larry, how do you see I think Liberty going? rolls. Like you said, uh, Liberty is in the trenches is, is real tough. And yeah. on, on, the, on the skilled positions, I think the edge might go to um, Centennial. A Centennial yeah. But in the, the trenches is where the game is won, so I got yeah. Liberty. Josh read your mind with the score. He read my mind with the statement he made. Yep. You know – I just yeah you you pressure Connolly I think you can pressure him into some interceptions and make Centennial play catch up and the game starts up front and that's where Liberty is at its strength. I love this discussion. We went ten minutes over and you know what I don't care, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> no um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it here with this, Larry. I we're all gonna miss you here in town. We wish you and Sarah and the kids best of luck in Kansas City. Uh, have fun. Don't forget about us. Come home Not every now and then. And you know what? I think Robert Vaca really kind of says it well. Larry, you will be missed, buddy. Much love and respect for everything that you've done for our kids and this community. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for all the highlights you gave as a player and everything you've done for the community as an adult here in town. Good luck, and Kansas City is better off with you in it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking – I'm. I- I'm getting now that I'm about to leave. I'm really getting emotional about it. But I'll uh, give you a hug tomorrow night. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss all my guys, and I'm like I'll be back in town. I'll, I'll be back for some of the games later in the season, and I'll be back over in, back in the summer as well to do a summer program. So I won't be gone completely. Okay. But so I'll miss everyone. Good. I like it. Appreciate it. For Diana Rodriguez, our director, Josh Bennett, John Metis, Larry Parker, I am Trevor Horn. This is Bivar City Live. Bivar City Nightly tonight. We got a big volleyball matchup. Garces is at Liberty, and then don't forget game night tomorrow night, 11:15. We're gonna preview. We're gonna actually instead of preview and we're going to go back and recap all these games so thank you guys for your time we'll see you then bye-bye